On August 13, 1924, while working as a carpenter on the Welland Canal, John DiBiase entered a gallery of Lock 1 to get out of the rain. When he came out again, his head touched a hanging live wire carrying 2,000 volts. He was electrocuted and could not be revived. John was just 44 years old. In another tragic twist, John's wife Mary was away in Italy at the time, visiting family and friends. She received the news of John's death there. We can only imagine her heartbreak upon hearing it. In Canada, John was buried two days after his death on August 15th. Mary was forced to begin her grieving in Italy and didn't make it back to Canada on the Italian ocean liner SS Conte Rosso until late September, roughly six weeks after her husband's death. Shocked and devastated, Mary tried to pick up the pieces and provide for herself and their daughter Laura through operating a fruit stand in St. Catharines. At some point, she purchased this beautiful granite gravestone for John at Victoria Lawn Cemetery, which still bears his portrait. The grief of her loss remained palpable. Several years went by, and then one day, Mary took a step many Canadians did in the first several decades of the 20th century. She sought the help of spiritualism, a movement with roots that historians date back to the 1840s. Spiritualists believe that the spirits of the dead exist, and most importantly, that the living can communicate with them. Since its beginnings, the lure of spiritualism for many has been some kind of proof or confirmation that a deceased loved one is out there somewhere, waiting for them, guiding them, and providing the promise of a future reunion. In the late 1920s, St. Catharines had a dedicated circle of spiritualists led by Jenny O'Hara Pincock. Pincock herself was no stranger to grief. Her husband Robert Newton Pincock, an osteopath, had died of kidney disease at just 45 years old in 1928. Although introduced to spiritualism before Robert's death, that event solidified her belief and made her a lifelong devotee to the movement. She even spent many summers in Lilydale, New York, a town dedicated to spiritualism and a place of pilgrimage for devotees from around the world. Beginning in 1927, Jenny, her sister Minnie, and Reverend Fred Maines began holding seances in Jenny's living room at 47 Church Street St. Catharines, often in collaboration with American medium William Card Huser. In 1930, Jenny published a book called Trails of Truth. In it, she aimed to prove the existence of life after death using minutes of seances conducted by her circle in St. Catharines. What makes the book an important source is that it provides insights into who came to see Pincock, why, and some of what transpired during their meetings. Somehow, Mary DiBiase was made aware of Jenny Pincock and her circle. On March 11, 1929, she arrived at Jenny's house seeking an audience and hoping to speak with her husband John through a medium. Pincock did not initially know about John DiBiase's death working on the Welland Canal, but recognized Mary because her and Robert used to frequent the DiBiase's fruit stand when Robert was alive. She wrote in Trails of Truth describing Mary's plight. One heart would not be comforted. One soul reached out in brave endeavor and broken questionings. Crushed but cheerful, this stranger in a strange land determined to find a solution to her honest doubts. And so it happened. William Cart Huser was the medium that day, and the sitters placed flowers and several trumpets, that is, aluminum cones used to amplify spirit voices, on the floor. Before long, John DiBiase spoke to Mary through the medium, apparently first in Italian. Jenny wrote that she would never forget the touching tenderness of the scene, for it was all but visible. Switching between Italian and English, throughout the next several minutes, John apparently named Mrs. DiBiase's business partner, their daughter Laura, and provided a particularly poignant detail of Mary's mourning. For a time, she had kept a picture of him under her pillow and cried, calling out his name and pulling her hair in distress. Another interesting detail provided by John was that a policeman came to the fruit stand often. Mary confirmed that a policeman came by every day to wish her a good morning. 
Another mundane but important revelation was that Mary had a leaky bathroom pipe. John instructed her to screw it tightly. Mary later investigated and discovered that a pipe was indeed leaking because of loose connections. The conversation later turned to religion, and then, apparently in stilted English, John told her, Death no different, in one way, just like take your coat off. Maria, Maria, there is no hell here, no devil, just heaven. Then, a spirit named Dr. Anderson, often the spirit guide of Pinkock's circle, addressed Mary as well. As the caterpillar changes its body into a butterfly, so it is with your spirit. You throw away your old body, which has become worn out with daily strife, and take on a new body that is healthy and perfect. Many people fear death, but if they knew what death really is, they would rejoice when it knocks at their door. Toward the end of the seance, he slowly repeated, There is no death. There is no death. The reader of Trails of Truth is then told that the session concluded with John returning for a final and affectionate farewell with Mary. Other than the record of the seance recorded for Pinkock's book Trails of Truth, I have yet to find any other sources about Mary's subsequent life after John's death. Sadly, I haven't even been able to find a photo of her, or evidence of where she lived later in life, where she passed away, and where she might be buried. I also have yet to find any info about the DiBiase's daughter Laura. This is a sad consequence of Mary being of meager means, and her living during a time when women were still often only mentioned or thought of in relation to their husband. I hope to update you with more information about the family in a future video. For his part, John is actually memorialized twice in St. Catharines. His name appears on the Gates of Remembrance of the Welland Canal Fallen Workers Memorial, which bears the names of the 137 workers who died building the Welland Canal. It was unveiled in November 2017 and sits right beside the St. Catharines Museum and Welland Canal Centre. It's a poignant testimony about a time when workplace safety and even deaths on the job mattered little when big projects promising progress and prosperity were pushed ahead at a furious pace. John is also, as we saw at the beginning of this video, memorialized on this gravestone at Victoria Lawn Cemetery in St. Catharines. In this case, we are fortunate to be able to see a photo of him right on the stone. But his grave is a lonely one, it seems, as none of his family are buried with him. I don't know if any relatives ever come and visit. Spiritualism was a somewhat taboo subject, even in the 1920s. In addition, many spiritualists, including William Carthuser, the medium mentioned in this video, were confirmed as frauds who manifested events like table wrappings, levitating objects, and other seemingly amazing happenings through trickery and deception. For many of us, our impressions of spiritualism are based on movies that place emphasis on such manifestations. Objects moving seemingly of their own volition intrigue us and make us wonder, what if any of these manifestations were actually caused by supernatural forces? But perhaps the better question to ask is what can we learn from seances in the history of spiritualism, and why did people seek out mediums? It's tough to generalize, but we can say with some certainty that many in Canada, like Mary DiBiase, sought out spiritualists so they could communicate with a loved one gone too soon. The sudden tragic death of John caused grief that she was unable to assuage through common means like family, community, or the church. We have no way of knowing exactly how Mary felt after visiting Pincock and speaking with someone she thought was her deceased husband, but we can say that the seance minutes provide us with a small glimpse into Mary and her husband's life we otherwise wouldn't see. Lastly, the DiBiase story speaks to us about things most of us face at some point in life. Sudden loss, grief, coping with the consequent life changes, and doing the best we can to move on. Behind the popular representations of spiritualism and seances that focus on ghostly voices, wobbling tables, and mysterious knocking, there is often a very human story of love, loss, and hope in life after death. I hope you'll join us for future videos about Jenny Pincock and more about Canadian spiritualism. Please like the video, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications about future videos. Thanks for watching.